have you been getting like signs or weird things happening to you and you just didn't say anything i was like oh maybe something like that i mean i wouldn't say signs i kind of just thought weird things were happening and falling all over the fucking place i mean i don't know <laughs> he's just looking at me like why didn't you say something and i'm like i thought that shit shit falls gravity like i don't know like what do y'all want me to say like i don't know so it just becomes this whole thing i had to get cleansed they did some shit over in haiti for me um so the loi could essentially leave me alone and stop scaring me to death um <laughs> and then i started to think wow the connection between all of this is uncanny and mad crazy because i realized a lot of when the height of this stuff was occurring was literally when i started my haitian channel and that's a lot of you guys' favorite channel right it's a channel where i talk about haitian voodoo politics and folklore Christmas. Welcome to the first edition of 12 Days of Christmas 2022. Make sure you guys smash that subscribe button to be notified every single time I post a video. Now it is currently Friday and I do not like to post videos on weekends so you're going to be getting consecutive 12 days of story time videos on weekdays only. We're going to get a break on the weekends you feel me? So the next upload is actually going to be a Monday. If you are seeing my face and you think you're subscribe check again i also have three channels okay this is my third channel also my personal and or vlog channel where we do lifestyle story times hauls things like that so if you're into that sort of thing make sure you subscribe to this channel my two other channels my the mademoiselle channel which deals with rants reactions and commentary pertaining to black social issues and then i have my haitian channel which is chronicles of a zoe that highlights my haitian culture and i dibble and dabble in a lot of things regarding haitian voodoo politics and folklore. If you are interested in all, some, one, or two of these things, make sure you're subscribed to the channel that suits you. But for this channel, we're going to be doing 12 days of story time. Last year, I did it on my main channel. This year, we're bringing that to this channel because that counts as personal content. You guys seem to really enjoy my life updates, personal family updates, and such. So we're going to be doing a little bit new and old type of story times, but mainly old. Um, A lot of these stories are going to be personal because like, I don't really be out here making it my business is other people's business but if it has something to do with me and you just happen to be the villain that's your business okay shout out to us we are finally at 9,000 subscribers can we get to 10k by the end of this month that'd be great that'd be amazing that'd be really really amazing and also i'll be turning 28 on january 5th mark your calendars follow me on instagram okay we're gonna be lit it's out here it's national the mademoiselle month in the month of january if you didn't know okay um uh, my story time sometimes triggers certain people in real life and and, you know, let me just say right now, sock pop coton on back here, okay? If you don't like it, get the fuck out. The video ain't for you. If you have a problem or if you have a different side of the story, feel free to make your own damn video, all right? So, for this video, I'm not even gonna lie. I genuinely been hiding this. I did not want to tell any of you about this. This video right here is something I contemplated about for months. To be quite honest with you, maybe my whole life, I kind of wanted spirit spiritual counsel on it and I did get spiritual counsel on it a long time ago and I kind of ignored it and it kind of blew up in my face in September do you feel me I feel like the only reason I'm making this video now is because I feel called to make it and I think it's probably time I stop ignoring the callings um you know it is what it is so if you guys watch my Haitian channel you would know that something like this would technically belong on my Haitian channel but since this is my personal channel I'm gonna share it here I was born with what many Haitian would call a quaff okay and a quaff in american layman terms would be considered a veil many of you guys who are born with the same thing probably know exactly what i'm talking about there are some people that are born with a veil over their eyes or all over their skin when they're babies i'm not talking about babies that are like still in the sack i'm talking about like a very clear white veil now those people on my patreon or my membership they know about this as i spoke about 
all of this when it was happening but i i chose to keep all of this um for for many multitudes of reasons right i didn't want to be judged i didn't want people to call me demonic or evil or anything like that but again i felt a calling to finally speak about this on a public platform right um especially for people that may be going through this and, and probably want some sort of clarification or just some sort of validation that they're not the only one right so i was born with this veil especially when it comes to haitian culture most haitians either embrace it or try to destroy it right so what this veil basically means is that you'll be able to have a deeper connection with ancestors ghosts spirits everything like that you essentially are born with a sixth sense in a way right and this gift could be different things it could be a very very strong gift of discernment it could be literally being able to see spirits or speak to spirits um communicate with them through dreams it could be literally whatever but it basically means that you have a heightened ability to communicate with spirits and things like that in the outside world so my parents would always tell me oh fait ta coif, fait ta coif. you were born with a coif you were born with this veil right and i never understood what the hell it meant but they would always use this for every single time I was afraid of the dark or when I would tell them I would see things since I was a child I would see lots of crazy things not violent but just things that I know clearly weren't of this world right I would see ghosts I would see people that I knew who passed away they would come and they would speak to me and it got to a point where when I first went to Haiti when I was about six or seven I had spirits playing with me in my dreams and my parents brought me to Haiti because they they thought I was being spiritually attacked or whatever the case may be and they went to an Ogon now I speak about this type of stuff on my Haitian channel all the time um they went to an Ogon Ogon is a Haitian voodoo priest a mumbo is a Haitian voodoo priestess and the Ogon basically was like oh you know there's nothing wrong like nobody's spiritually attacking her or anything like that essentially um the loi are just speaking to her so loi are basically Haitian spirits Haitian deities that govern Haitian voodoo so my parents were like oh okay whatever now a lot of you guys are probably like what that's a big deal what do you mean whatever this is the thing every Haitian watching this no matter how religious holier than thou or far removed your parents your family or whatever say they are from Haitian voodoo you have a loi your family have a loi or maybe a couple of loi that protect you either it's going to be family members because that's that's a whole nother conversation in itself um like family members that become loi of their family that's like that that's a whole nother thing but there's other loi you know that essentially govern Haitian ethics and spirituality and each family usually has a few that protect the people within that family especially the children within that family if you are born with a coif you're able to communicate with them the way no one else can they protect you they speak to you in a different way now mind you growing up as I've said numerous times in different story times people always told me voodoo was bad they demonized it it. they said that it was a horrible religion don't believe anything about it anything like that so I just never cared for all of that and plus as a child all I knew was I was more with a quaff so I'm seeing all of these things thinking I'm nuts <laughs> okay thinking I got imaginary friends honestly literally until a couple months ago I realized it was something else so literally I remember there was times like my mom she she, she used to like buy things from people or go to her friends houses like middle of the night and she didn't want to walk by herself right I used to be with her all the time and I used to be so mad about it because I'm like yo I don't want to be here because I kid you not I would tell her like yo I see spirits okay I see spirits at night I don't want to go out at night like it was very terrifying to me like when I first like noticed that something was going on was when I would go on these nightly walks with my mom to her friends houses or to buy whatever at night because if you guys also haven't been on the channel before you haven't watched my other story times especially like on my Haitian channel I was raised on Jefferson Park it's in Elizabeth and Jefferson Park was not always what it looked like today each little component of that park was kind of built at different times so at the time when my mom would make me walk across the park with her it was mainly woodland okay so I'm sitting here walking through the woods at night and, and, and I'm just like yo I see shit I'm not going with you anymore she's like laughing at me and I'm like I don't understand what's so funny um, I'm genuinely terrified you know but eventually you know I, I just kind of got used to the dark um I was just like you know what fuck it now I absolutely love the dark okay if anyone knows me they know I hate 
hate windows. I hate the fact that there's a window right here. My last apartment, I legit picked the apartment with the least amount of windows. Like, I do not like windows. I do not like sunlight. I absolutely love the dark. I embrace the dark. If I hear or I see anything now, I'm just like, nigga, bye. What you want? Like, I, I don't got time, you know? So, as a child, though, I was scared. But as I grew older, I kind of just got used to things. But I can also say, like, things just kind of stopped happening to me for a really long time until I hit my preteen middle school years. And I started to lose friends. This is also something that I talk about a lot. Being raised in the hood gave me a lot of anxiety, gave me a lot of PTSD, literally hearing my friends got shot up at the age of like 14. You know, that that's different. Like at the time it was normal because you know, I lived in the hood, you know, that, that that's hood politics. But now that I'm like 27, about to be 28 in like a month, and I'm looking back at all of this, I'm just like, this wasn't normal, this wasn't okay. And the way I processed a lot of it also wasn't okay. It's just crazy because I never really thought that things were, you know, I, I always thought that, you know, I chopped up everything that happened in my childhood to legit imaginary friends, seeing things, maybe I'm mentally ill, because a lot of people in this family probably mentally ill and they have some problems. So maybe I'm mentally ill too. And I mean, I do have, you know, certain things which I've talked about before, but you know, I, I chopped it up to delusion. I'm not gonna lie, I did. I'm not gonna say who it is. I'm not gonna, you know, because people are gonna be sitting there like speculating and all of that. Cause to be honest, I've had a lot of friends that died at that age. So it is what it is. And me and this friend spoke before he passed away. And I was supposed to be at the event where he was shot and killed. I didn't go to this event, thankfully, right? He was the one that warned me and told me not to go to this event. He ended up getting into a fight and he got shot at, right? Just from those details alone, you're more than likely going to figure out who I'm talking about. But nonetheless, it, it was a very heartbreaking, shattering situation for me. Like that was like my first friend that I remember dying at a very young age of a very violent way. You feel me? And I went to the wake. I didn't go to the funeral, but I went to the wake. And I remember that was one of my first wakes. And it was just horrid because first of all, I had friends that were really close with him as well. Um, and they would sit there and they would be like, oh my God, can you come with me to the casket? Oh my God. Da, da, da. So, you know, I, the thing is I've always been a support for other people. It is what it is. I think that's just like my lot in life. I got thoroughly terrified when I thought I saw this corpse raise up in the coffin. Literally. I tell y'all I was fucked up for days, like not weeks. I could not sleep. <laughs> I could barely speak. I told my parents about it and they just looked at each other like, shockingly, they didn't think I was crazy. They didn't laugh. They was just like, wait, you 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 saw him raise up in the coffin? I said, I swear to God, I was looking and I saw him raise up in the coffin. Mind you, this was like literally like, I went to the back of the church and I was looking through the doors. You know how sometimes like some churches have like the doors you could peer through? I literally saw this man raise up and turn his head and look through the doors and I'll done up. And my parents, of course, they comforted me and things like that. But eventually I got over it. They didn't say nothing to me about it. They didn't say nothing to me about it. Again, I thought I was going nuts. I was like, you know what? Sleep deprivation. I'm sad. I'm tired. I'm crying. It's the stress. Moving on to a couple of weeks after that, when I finally started to calm down. Now, those of you guys on Patreon will definitely know about this as I already talked about this over there. If you guys want like exclusive updates, exclusive live streams, head on to the Patreon. That's why I be telling them all the tea way before it hits the mainstream internet, feel me? I was on AOL messenger you feel me and i used to talk with this person all the time when they were alive on aol messenger same person whose funeral i just went to and i literally could have saw him pop up in a casket all that and i see him online but the online shit don't look normal like if you guys ever had AIM, AOL Messenger, whatever, the names were like specific. Like if you had a cap in a specific letter, it would show up as a capital. If you had a lowercase in a specific way, it, you know, like it was like, you know, your, your emojis or your symbols or whatever. Like if, you know, it would be like that. But his name was always lowercase. I remember his name was always lowercase and it was always like something next to it. But this time when I saw him online, it was all in caps and it was just strange. So I saw it. I was on the phone with one of my best friends at the time um this is the same best friend i spoke about last year on my 12 days of story time that i said was like literally one of the worst friends i ever had i will say during these times she's probably the only person 
that didn't make me feel like I was fucking nuts. I'm on the phone with this friend and I'm like, yo, do you see homeboy online right now on your aim? She said, no. I said, so why the fuck I see him online? She was like, shorty, stop playing. Shorty's my nickname, by the way. Shorty, stop playing. I said, I'm not playing. I see this man online on my end. And mind you, there's no screenshot at a time. There was no like, you know, iPhone. So I'm just on the home phone talking to her like, dude, like it's on, like I'm freaking out. And she's like, I mean, hit it up. And I'm like, hit it up? He's dead. And she's like, well, you could see him and no one else can. So hit it up. And I'm like, whatever. So I hit it up. And kid you not, it, it was a very strange conversation. Um, clearly, I'm not going to go into that because if that was really him, you know, we don't want to give his private details away, right? But it was just strange because I was like, okay, maybe it was the person's family members on the account trying to get information about how he died and who killed him. I really thought that's what it was. I was like, it, it, there's no fucking way because this is very strange, okay? But there was never anyone that used the Facebook account or the MySpace account that this person had. It was just the aim. And I even went forward to contact many of the family members of this person. I was like, by any chance, have any of you guys logged in to this person's account, you know, trying to gather information or anything like that? They were like, no, do you know something? I was like, no, but I've been seeing this account online and I was just wondering and they were like, that's not possible because we can't even get into the account. And I'm like, y'all just fucking with me, right? Because that, that that's really cruel and unusual for y'all to just be out here messaging people on this account. And they were like, okay, well let us know next time you see it online. And I was like, okay. At this point, I, I know I won't lie, like a very big part of me thought like these motherfuckers lying. It never ended for weeks. This account would just be online. I would ask other people like, do you see this account online? Do you see that account online? Do you see that? And they would be like, no, how you see it online? I'm like, I don't know, but this shit is freaking me out. And I, at one point I hit up the family like, yo, I see this account online. And they're like, we're definitely not on it. I don't know what's going on. We not on the account. And I'm just like, um, I might be really going insane. Like I was like, I might really be going insane. Like there's, there's no way I'm seeing this account and I'm messaging with this account and nobody can see the account. And then even weirder, every time I went back to look at the conversation between me and that account, white, gone. On. So I'm like, all right, this is nuts. And I don't have time for this goofy shit. I'm just gonna leave it alone. So eventually I just stopped communicating with the account. Honestly, I think I stopped using AIM for a good minute. Um, and then I finally came back later. But when I was a preteen, early teens, that was about the main experience that I would have. And also in my childhood apartment that I grew up in on 471, I always felt like there was something in there. Uh, I, I don't care what nobody says. My mom used to literally laugh at me like, oh, is there a spirit in here? And I'm like, there's nothing funny about that like there's, there's something about this apartment to this day anytime i have a dream it's always about that apartment i never have like real dreams about this apartment or the previous apartment i was in or even the first apartment i was in i never have dreams about those i always have dreams about that apartment i always felt people there even certain family members that i had every time i would go to their houses for summer breaks or whatever the case may be i'd be like yeah there's something in this house i don't know there's a spirit in here and they would just be like girl you always saying some shit i'm like why would i lie you know and again subjective right but funny enough, I have another cousin that also has a very similar type of experience where he can sense and feel things. And he was like, yeah, there's definitely something in our house, bro. Like, I don't care. And then all my cousins really started seeing something in that house. So that's when I finally felt validated. I was like, okay, honestly, this apartment's fucking haunted. Okay, luckily they ended up moving a couple years later, but it's like my whole life, I had all these like little small occurrences. And you know, I was like, ah, maybe it's just some regular regular shit, right? It wasn't until I would say college into adult hood where shit started to ramp the fuck up right i'm talking about cups flying off my counter glass breaking when i'm washing it in the sink glass flying from the shelves because like i have i don't know oh i never did a house tour yet but i have like this collection of glasses like in my kitchen it's like a display glass thing and i put like most of my alcohol like shot glasses and things here and literally there'd be days she just do fall and this this house is very stable we ain't got earthquakes in jersey feel me i like been ignoring all of this shit um because i'm just like oh maybe it's the wind i don't fucking know like what am i supposed to do and i've been so used to kind of being gaslighted and being told that these shits aren't real um very very few times where i actually been validated so yeah i was kind of freaked out but it was just like what am i supposed to do <laughs> like you know so of course i did become very you know religious at a point i was really into my catholic faith and then you know i left the church they tried to kick me out but i really fucking left well i was kicked out the 
church, my bad, youth group. I was kicked out the youth group, but realistically I resigned and then they kicked me out for not trying to resolve the issue. But when I was very like into my spirituality, like with the rosary, like literally I did the rosary every week. Okay, I went to my little confessiones. I have my nice little uh, body of Jesus and the, the blood of Jesus every Sunday. It was more heightened. It was way more heightened. Even when I would go to church, like I went to Baptist churches. I've been to advances, Pentecostal, all types of stuff. When I used to go to those churches throughout middle school and high school, it was heightened. I don't know what it was, but it was like I had a lot more awareness of whatever spiritual things were around me. Because now that I don't go, it's, it's not as bad but now it's like oh it's starting to ramp up so recently i decided not even maybe a year or two ago i decided to finally get a reading that's also something that a lot of haitians and just in general spiritual people always tell you don't go get readings those are demonic you shouldn't know your future if you know your future or someone tells you your future they can manipulate it whatever i was like honestly i'm willing to take the risk why not honestly I i've just always wanted to get a reading so i went to three different people to get a reading i went to an independent reader that someone recommended me to she was incredible i went to another reader that I actually got sponsored with um through an app but I felt like the reading was actually trash and I didn't go forward with the sponsorship but I did take my free reading funny enough I kind of feel bad because what the fuck they said was actually true very strange and then I had another reading from somewhere else all of them were tarot readings Heed y'all not, literally all three of these readings pulled the same cards. And essentially, in these readings, they said that I had a gift. Um, a very, very strong gift that was basically passed down from my ancestors. Or from a distant but close enough relative. Where I have a very, very strong gift for discernment and I can communicate with things beyond this realm. I was just like, uh-huh. And it was like, I also have a spell casting ability. Where every single time I say something something it happens and i was like uh-huh kid you not i didn't take none of this shit seriously can you believe that shit the first two well the one from the app that i didn't take they said essentially the same things but they were also like yeah you're gonna be a teacher you know you're gonna be working with kids and i'm like nigga i'm self-employed fuck out of here funny enough now i'm a dance teacher with the children it's not full time it's part time and it's mainly like an after school type thing but that's insane because it's years later but the way that person said it it annoyed me because it was just like kind of like oh you're tired with your teacher life I'm not currently a teacher what the fuck are you talking about but everything else they said was pretty much accurate but then just that teacher bit kind of annoyed me and I was like nope you full of shit you a liar done <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie now I'm like damn maybe I need to go apologize to them and have them toss me some coin but it's whatever right and then the other two were were more so accurate but I'm not gonna lie even though that guy that was telling me the teacher thing was saying bullshit to me he still pulled the same exact cards that the other two did and I'm not gonna tell you guys what the cards are but again um they all said the same thing I have a ancestral gift i have a spell casting gift i have a special gift of discernment and i have an ancestral gift that was passed down and again i'm like mm, nonsense <laughs> like i was like it's very weird that you guys all said the same thing um literally like to a t they don't know each other they're not related to each other they're not even in the same region of the world anyhow so i was like okay I took this information pondered on it and i was like okay maybe the spell casting thing might be real and the discernment thing is definitely real um if any of you guys have watched me for years or if any of you guys know me personally you would know that i'm the person that most people do not like to come to because i'm gonna tell you how it is what it is and exactly what the fuck is gonna happen like before you even see the shit they'd be like oh i just got a job at that and I'm like, yeah, you're more than likely not gonna like that shit. And within what three to four months, you're gonna be telling me that you're applying for another job. Always happens. Hey, Ivana, I just started dating this girl. I want you to meet her. I ain't meeting a dot damn thing because it's probably not gonna last anyway. Now, of course, with my spell casting ability, I probably am speaking these things into existence. But at the same time, I don't feel like I use the spell casting ability. A lot of these things are just common sense to me. But I realized that over time, what's common sense to me is really not common sense to other people. I I'm able to peep and see things within people and situations that other people cannot literally from jump I used to think I was just a judgmental ass Capricorn like on some real shit I was like I'm probably just judgmental and I don't care I own that shit but over time like people would literally just come to me and be like yo like you was right about this like yo tell me more like yo on some shit I swear to god I was like I need to start a counseling service because it's insane you know that's why at one point I really wanted to be a therapist and then I thought of being a life coach or whatever but I, I chose to go into communications because I like to talk a lot more right and it's insane because even on my Haitian channel, there'll be bokos, there'll be ogons, there'll be mumbos in my comment section. Sometimes they make it into my spam. That's why sometimes you may not see the comments, but some of them will, will, will be public. And they'll be like, you have something within you. You have something.
something that other people don't have. You have this ability to speak and make people listen. I would be like, get the fuck out of my shit. Again, this could be subjective. Like, on some real shit, like, when people would tell me things like this, I'm like, oh, thanks, you know? Like, thanks for taking my advice. Like, I'm, I'm good at giving advice. Like, that, that's really what I thought it was. But over time, like, there would be, be many spiritual people just out the blue picking me out in crowds, y'all. You guys are not aware, because I don't really speak about this much, but I did work in sales. It was a horrible part of my life, okay? I worked in door-to-door -door sales. I worked in street sales. I worked in um, charity sales. The charity sales I actually liked. Um, I did Humane Society. I also did People for Animals, and then I did Save the Children. Those were my favorite. Everything else, trash. But anyhow, I would be on the streets of New York, streets of New Jersey, knocking on doors. Um, Sometimes people just pick me out, just walking. It would be a witch. It would be, you know, some older some other spiritual whatever and they'd be like there's something about you where are you from what do you do do you have a gift like it would be and i used to think these people were just crazy because it's new york people in new york are fucking nuts <laughs> i'm gonna lie i'm sorry new york because like i was born in long island i don't care i could say that all right y'all are not okay people in new york city and manhattan they're nuts so i used to be like oh um i have a gift of singing like i sing i dance i don't really use it that much because at the time i really wasn't they would just stare at me and be like are you sure you don't have another gift and i'm like no not that i know of and they're like you should really consider looking and tapping into your spirit spiritual potential all this extra shit and i again since i wasn't really into that realm at the time and i'm still not really I'm, I'm more so into collecting the information and distributing it so people do not disrespect haitian culture as a whole i ain't got time i was like oh damn okay like you know they'd be like can i do a reading it's free or i'm like i'm not i don't know i know i don't know you that's one thing i learned and i'll never do it and there ain't no random people about to do readings on me for fun mm -mm. i don't know where you came from but it's just insane like people just randomly pick me out and cry things like that and i just honestly never um really thought anything of it so fast forward to september as many of you guys know i was out for the count i was sick as shit and i've been consistent on youtube for the past what five six years i've never really missed a beat but for september i was sick as a dog i thought my ass had covid i did not i had literally like i forgot what it was i had like tonsillitis and bronchitis at the same time it was something like that i don't remember don't quote me on it, it was something i did tell you guys what i had but i had like two legitimate infections at the same damn time don't know where where the hell it came from like literally i had just came back from meeting my man's family and i thought okay maybe i got sick from one of them there um but literally nobody was sick with the exception of one person and i was like okay maybe i got it for her but she got way better than me like she she was better faster she was better quicker and i'm like okay why am i still sick like it was like i was going backwards like as soon as i felt like my throat started to hurt i went straight to the doctor y'all know i work in doctor's office back in the day i stopped working there during covid but i still go there for all my emergency needs okay so i went over there i got some antibiotics and antivirals because i I went to the doctor and they were just like yeah um this is what you have but at the same time we're not really sure and i'm like what the fuck you mean like mind you i'm known for having these things okay tonsillitis bronchitis all of that i, I they even recommended i take my tonsils out a long time ago. i was like no i'm black they're gonna steal my kidneys too bitch i ain't going under no unnecessary nice motherfuckers all right so i was like i'm gonna take these antibiotics leave me alone whatever antivirals antibiotics so i was taking both at the same time i started feeling better after one day by the second day of taking the antibiotics i was going backwards it was like i was starting back from day one and i'm like wait aren't antibiotics and antivirals supposed to make you feel better like what the fuck is going on now when i get sick i don't tell my parents shit ever since i moved out because they get so worried and ever since i moved out they always trying to get me to move back in and they just be on some oh well you're sick well since you live by yourself then see that means we can't take care of you what happens if something happens to you and nobody's there da, 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 da. like ma'am sir you just want me to move back in the house so leave me alone like i can't even tell my parents i have a headache i tell my parents i have a headache oh you have a headache did you go to the hospital how long has it been you need to go and get help like my parents are so extra so i didn't even tell them and i'm not gonna lie i'm so used to having strep and all of that but this was bad like i could not breathe like i felt like every day my lungs were closing like it was mad weird so i'm like all right something's wrong here um but i'm like okay maybe it is covid whatever everything comes out negative for that but i'm like all right maybe i just need to take the meds i need to relax i need to sit down i couldn't do a lick of shit all i could do was go take a shit so eventually I finally um, talked to my mom because I, I I didn't want her to hear the cough in my voice but she she just peeped it she clocked it like I, I was on the phone with her and she's like hey yo are you sick and I said I was sick but I'm feeling better kind of 
And she's like, are you sure? Why? Mind you, my mom's never done anything like that. Usually if I'm sick or like if I have allergies or whatever and she clocks it, she'll kind of leave me alone. Like she won't really say anything. But this time was different, very different. And someone in our family recently just passed away. Um, she was a very, very, very close family member, um, mainly on my dad's side. And she said, well, I'm off today and I just took a nap. And this person in our family that just died came to me in the dream and they said, you have to go to the doctor right now. They said, bring my child to the doctor right now this lady used to consider me like her own child like i loved her to death even though she was annoying god rest her soul <laughs> like i loved her to death but she would always be like yo you're my child you're my child i love you so much um so i was like didn't she just die don't isn't there like some sort of like i don't know afterlife process to becoming into people's dreams already like she just died like a week ago how the fuck she in your dreams already and she was like i don't know but that shit kind of scared me so i'm kind of happy you i don't know something just told me to call you and that's also something everybody who knows me personally knows that i have that ability where like i know when someone needs me or when someone needs comfort and i will contact them well that's if i really care about them to be honest with you because everybody else that never got a phone call or if i don't have your number it is what it is right i was just at the doctor she's like but you said that you don't feel any better those meds are supposed to help you feel better i said they are but they're not she's like then go back to the doctor i was like all right whatever boom as soon as i'm literally packing myself to go to the doctor because i was like i'm probably gonna be there all fucking day and if i'm not i was like i might as well just like go to my parents house no 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 i was planning on doing something i don't know what i was planning on doing but there was something i was doing so i had to pack my bag i think i just like got like my laptop and stuff just in case i was gonna be at the doctor's office all day every single time i go there i end up being caught up helping whoever's there and like working and stuff like that so i was like just in case let me pack my stuff out of nowhere i get a phone call from my dad hey how are you mind you he was not in the same room as my mom he wasn't even in the same building my, my dad was out bobo shang okay he was out doing his his shit my mom was in the house when she was talking to me i had this very very strange premonition that something's wrong and you really shouldn't drive your car today mind you this was on a monday right so let's walk it back a little bit mondays i have my zumba classes in west orange la fitness 8 30 a.m kid y'all not that whole day my car was driving crazy like it was sliding back and forth i i, I just thought i needed a a um alignment <laughs> okay i thought i just needed an alignment but my car was skidding that whole day and when i came home because i'm usually at my man's house on weekends i came home that monday after the gym and sage was wilding my cat singing like a canary she's following me like she's protecting me or something like she's like on my feet she, she's trying to crawl me mind you she's never tried to climb crawl me she's trying to climb me but at this point she's like going crazy it's like she's guarding me mind you sage does follow me around the house but like sometimes she just kind of gets tired and gets bored and just goes to do what she does this day nah every step i took she took a step with me everywhere i went she went with me and the meowing was insane just meow 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 and i'm like what the hell is wrong with this cat and my dad's on the phone hearing the cat and he's telling me this he's like is that your cat i said yeah i don't know what's wrong with her like she, she's doing too much she's been acting weird all day and he was like yeah don't drive your car oh i'm going to the doctor i haven't been feeling well he said you haven't been feeling well why didn't you tell us that so i, I get the whole fucking spew oh, da, 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 da. why didn't you tell us you weren't feeling well rah, rah, rah. i said okay y'all gonna leave me alone with this i just didn't want to worry people and he's like okay well if you're gonna go to the doctor you need to take an uber and i'm like you want me to pay like a, a fucking 40 dollar uber it's like three fucking o'clock it, it's rush hour but ivana i had a dream do not drive the car and haitians y'all know haitians in their damn dreams haitians be serious with their damn dreams y'all and i ain't gonna lie i've had a few dreams myself that more than likely always came true so i was like you know what i'm gonna listen because when i don't listen usually bad things happen to me took ubers that a whole rest of that day took an uber to the doctor took an uber to my parents took an uber back home after i went to the doctor they gave me a different inhaler um they gave me like a way more powerful inhaler because my regular inhaler wasn't doing it because like literally like my lungs was closing it was weird they was like yo your breathing has gotten worse they was like what the hell like what did you do i'm like i didn't do anything i haven't been going anywhere i took off zumba everything and it was like yeah i don't know here's a better inhaler because it's your asthma is just like getting worse out of nowhere and i'm like strange so my parents called me they're like hey um you should come over and i'm like come over for what oh you know because you're sick and you know how you gonna take care of yourself and oh it's not just as I, I was like i take care of myself perfectly fine without you you know i'm a very independent person if you guys haven't realized um and i just don't like being over there because there's just be so much drama and just, so i was like you know what whatever i'll go i'll be nice so i go over there and now they hold me hostage y'all 
all. You can't go anywhere. You can't talk to anyone. You can't do anything. You have to stay here. You just contact the organs in Haiti, the mumbos, and all of this extra shit. Mind you, ironically, there happened to be like a cyclone passing through Haiti at the time. So it was very hard to get in contact with anyone. So it took like over three or four hours after I even got there to get a contact from the organ that my dad had um, contacted. Now, mind you, these organs are closely related to my family, right? So they're like, yeah, something's going on. And you have to stay here until we figure it out. I said, excuse me, I have things to do. I have work to <coughs> do. <sighs> That's exactly how I sounded. I sounded crazy. Like, it, I've never been that bad, bro. I was like, all right, I have things to do. I'm not about to sit here because you guys think that something bad's gonna happen to me. It was like, listen, it could be nothing. It could be not that serious. It could be a curse. It could not be a curse. We don't fucking know. But you have to stay in this house. So I was like, you know what? For the first time, I'm going to listen. So I stayed put in the house and I'm just like, this is so fucking irritating. I hate staying still. I hate not working. I hate like, I, I just, I'm a very, you know, like, I have to do things. So, first, all going replies. And we realized we're not going to use this all going no more because they was talking bullshit. They said that apparently I got into an altercation with a man and the man threw a curse on me. So, my dad sitting here questioning me and talking about what man I got into altercations with. I said, I got a whole man. So, who, what man am I going to get into altercations with? Then, I remembered, if you guys have watched that previous story time about my friend that I had that was in an abusive, well, that is in an abusive relationship with her husband, that man is about spite full of shit so i was like maybe him but i'm like is it really that serious not only am i a kid but it's just like there's other things at play that'd be like nah there's no way but at the same time i'm not gonna put it past him and i'm like that's the only person i've gotten into an altercation with in the past six months like if anything maybe a subscriber but i'm like why the fuck would a subscriber curse me that's a lot of work throwing curses on people and things like that are like very very like soul heavy <laughs> like you know like you're, you're basically sacrificing parts of your soul to do bad to people so it's like who the fuck will sacrifice they soul to do something fucked up to me for no reason like i don't really know you know my subscribers personally enough for for me to attack them to a way that they would want to attack me so i'm like i don't know that's the only person so he was like yeah i'm getting a second and a third opinion because i don't know this, this man sound like he full of shit i was like oh he was like yeah i mean i know him for years but he don't be saying accurate stuff so for those of you guys who have your local mumbo ogon witch anything like that always get a second and possibly a third opinion about what they tell you about certain things because this experience really had me like boy who the fuck did i get an altercation with unless this is from years ago because i know there's a couple men that probably want to you know cut my locks off you feel me cut my vagina off. but like it's not even that serious i'm like nah but then i had to think what i'm like nah I'm, I'm actually pretty cool with a good amount of dudes i've messed with or i'm exes with so i'm like it's not even that fucking deep but unless it's like my current ex but i'm like my current ex like the past one the, i mean the most recent one don't even speak crayon <laughs> like so what i don't understand so i'm like i don't fucking know i'm like i don't know uh this don't sound right second and third organ finally get back to us because like i said cyclone passing to haiti you can't even get through and they're like yeah so there's nothing wrong like there's no curse or anything like that but the loa want to meet her the loa are the ones that have been doing all of this from the car to the breaking of the glass mind you i didn't tell my parents anything about all of this stuff at all i didn't tell them anything about anything i kind of kept all of this to myself for the most part because again i didn't want to be judged so my parents are hearing all of this shit by you maybe my dad because my dad's the one with the connects and he starts basically regurgitating to me everything that i went through in my life that i kind of kept to myself that the ogo said like yeah you know when you saw this when you did that when you're communicating with that when the glass fell here when it did that and i'm like and my dad's like have you been getting like signs or weird things happening to you and you just didn't say anything i was like oh maybe something like that i mean i wouldn't say signs i kind of just thought weird things were happening and falling all over the fucking place i mean i don't know <laughs> he's just looking at me like why didn't you say something and i'm like i thought that shit shit falls gravity like i don't know like what do y'all want me to say like i don't know so it just becomes this whole thing i had to get cleansed they did some shit over in haiti for me um so the loa could essentially leave me alone and stop scaring me to death um <laughs> and then i started to think wow the connection between all of this is uncanny in mad crazy because i realized a lot of when the height of this stuff was occurring was literally when i started my haitian channel and that's a lot of you guys' favorite channel right it's a channel where i talk about haitian voodoo politics and folklore and i will tell you guys right now that channel was not supposed to be that that channel was supposed to be me trying shit that's why the email is haitian girl tries the name of that channel used to be haitian girl tries it was never chronicles of Ozo. and uh it's funny because that channel has its own audience its own voice it, it just takes a direction on its own i kid y'all not i could never really tell you how many subscribers or how many whatever is on that channel until
until I look at it because I didn't plan that channel. This channel I planned, my first channel I planned, like I meticulously plan almost everything in my life, but that channel was planned to be something, but then it ended up shifting into something completely different. And that started to make me think like, this shit not a coincidence. And funny enough, now people find me through that channel. I get booked based off my Haitian channel. I get reached based off my Haitian channel. It's very strange. Those ideas just come to me. That information, if I don't know it, if there's gaps missing, whether I'm talking about a loi, Haitian history, voodoo, folklore, anything like that, it's like something is speaking through me. If I can't think of a video idea, it's like one will just fall into my lap. It's different than any of my other platforms. It just feels like a higher calling. It feels like something I'm supposed to do. And I do feel like the loi, for whatever reason, are using me to spread a message or to spread a good message about Haitian spirituality as a whole and just Haitian history. Did you have any of your friends that have passed away like contact you? And I was like, maybe something like that. So I thought, and he was like, yeah, why didn't you say anything? I said, listen, cause I thought people were gonna think I'm fucking crazy or demonic or just like losing my goddamn mind. Now, if you guys do not know, I'm also, you know, bipolar. I do have anxiety and things like that, but I've never had hallucinations, delusions, or anything like that associated with my disorder. I know there may be people that associate this with delusions, but I can assure you it definitely isn't because there was another time where this actually goes into another friend of mine dying. Um, I lit a candle for him. So this is something that you should always do to ensure that they pass on, you know, peace, unity, all of that, right? So I lit a candle for him because he died a very violent death as well as many of the people that I know have. So I light this candle for him and it just keeps going out. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like I'm thinking maybe there's a draft in the room. There was no damn draft in the room. It was kind of hot. It was like spring into summertime. The, the candle keeps going out. And then like I had the candle on my nightstand and everything on my nightstand would just fly off the nightstand. And I started getting freaked the hell out. I was just like, oh my God, I'm about to, like, I, I was freaking out y'all. Like I was terrified. Cause this was like apparent for real. Like this was like, all right, this is not me. This is not just me seeing things, hearing things, thinking things like, all right, this shit just flying off. And uh-uh, this time I told my mom. So my dad sitting here asking me, oh, have you had anything? Oh, why didn't you tell us? I'm like, no, I did tell you guys. And I looked at my mom like, didn't I tell you? You saw this. I call my mom and I'm like, listen, you know my friend died recently. I've been lighting a white candle for him. And every single time I light the candle, it burns out and things are flying off of my nightstand. And my mom's like, what are you talking about? I said, I kid you not. This has been happening for a couple of days now and I don't know what to do. Watch. I literally light the candle. I put it on my nightstand. I had Ray-Bans, my phone, and maybe some other little stuff on my nightstand. Before both of our eyes candle went out, my Ray-Bans went flying. Vindication, bitch. I said, thank you to whoever did that. Thank you. Because now I'm not crazy. And my mom just looked and she walked away. And I was like, oh, I don't get it. I'm sorry for thinking that she was nuts. So I, I looked at my mom, I'm like, you don't remember that? She was like, if we, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's true, that, that did, that did kind of happen. I just, yeah, you know? And I'm like, yeah. So technically, there's been times I said this, that, and a third, but nobody was really paying me any mind. You know, it has a lot to do with your quaff. And I'm like, can someone fucking tell me what the fuck a quaff is for the millionth time? And that's when I found out it's a veil. And a lot of people are born with it. It's not just a Haitian thing, etc. A lot of you guys who have this particular type of sixth sense or whatever can comment down below. I'm very sure you guys have plenty of stories. These are just surface level. Mine is not as bad as many other people because my family tried to do something to take it off of me. And apparently maybe halfway worked, maybe a halfway didn't because most most of the time I'm fine, but some of the time I'm not. So it's like, I'm good, but I have another cousin in Haiti can be in any type of darkness. Like right now, I only have one light on over here, but these back lights aren't on. This is too dark for him. He will see shit and he will panic. He will like, he will panic. Like it's really, 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 really bad. So I'm just like, okay, well, this is bad. Cause at this point I'm hearing this, this shit and I'm hearing all this news and I'm like, wow. So what am I supposed to do now? And they're like, oh, well, you're gonna have to go to Haiti. Um, And I guess, do what they say or whatever because yeah like do you not see the state of haiti right now 
They're kidnapping people everywhere. I'm everywhere, not just the capital, everywhere. I'm not going there. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, of course you can't go now, but whenever you can, you're gonna have to go to Haiti, do ceremony, all this goofy shit. Um, it might be a higher calling. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, I'm not going through all of this right now. Listen, I've said it numerous times on my Haitian channel, and I'm gonna say it again. I do not wish to partake in Haitian voodoo or any other new spiritual experience, whether it's becoming Baptist, becoming Jehovah Witness, becoming Muslim, or a voodoo practitioner. Like, I just don't care for it right now it's just too much damn work I, it sounds crazy but like i have my own personal relationship with god and i'm okay with that i have my own personal connection with my ancestors and i'm okay with that and i'm blessed and highly favored by the law and i love it i just leave it like that right so i'm like um meeting me seeing me me going to haiti they're doing too much they're gonna play for the flight or what because no let me not say that because next thing you know i'll get a sponsorship and then i'm able to pay for it put your money where your mouth is and i'm end up having to go there right but what i'm trying to say is like it's just too much and i'm like damn i think I've been kind of ignoring this shit and ignoring all the signs for so long that like now everything is coming to, to fruition my whole life not only do I feel validated but I, I now it's like okay what do I do with this you know um I will say lately nothing crazy's happened to me nothing insane's happened um everything's been very normal um it's just been like more so of a safety thing that's been going on not safety I think it's more so of a guardianship has been going on lately I've been having dreams of Simbi, which a lot of you guys, especially if you're Haitian, would know having dreams of Simbi can be a good or a bad thing. But for me, I mean, the dreams are pretty peaceful. But the sad part is I don't remember what happened <laughs> in those dreams. But I remember it was peaceful. It wasn't enough for me to be alarmed or tell anyone. And that was also something my parents were looking at me like, why the fuck didn't you tell us? So usually Simbi comes to those who are chosen for something. Um, If they want you to practice, if they want you to be a mumbo or ogon, usually that's when they will come to you. Or if they're warning you about something to come, right? Or if they're telling you that they are protecting you. And Simbi is kind of usually like a snake. That's usually how they come to you. So it was like, I, I thought I was just having a regular dream in some Amazon river. I swear to God, like, see, this is the thing i'm a very realistic person so i think of every realistic approach before i think oh my god something bad's happening you know the spiritual is always the last thing on my mind and i know the ancestors and the law are very very frustrated with me because i just be ignore all types of signs I, I do and it is what it is at this point right like what now you should know me by now like what all that time i will just continue to do my videos as usual i'll let you guys know if i ever go to haiti um after because you know current state of haiti right now and the way i be talking shit about haiti and its politics um i ain't trying to get shot but uh, i'm definitely gonna let you guys know an update on that but there is one update on that and update on another story that i'm going to be filming right after this so of course make sure you guys smash that subscribe button smash that like button smash every button you know that can help and most importantly thank you guys for listening i was very very scared to make this video like i i truly was because again i didn't want to be judged i don't want people calling me demonic or like saying that i'm a devil worshiper because you know people are mad disrespectful but I, I feel like i did have to get this off my chest um i'm not necessarily 100 percent sure what's going on but the the loi and my ancestors have been watching me for a long time apparently for those of you guys who are spiritual leaders in your respective practices thank you for giving me the encouragement to create my content um for all of you guys that watch my content religiously on this channel or any other channel or all my channels i fuck with y'all the long way like i truly do love and appreciate you guys and most importantly if you're going through what i'm going through especially at a more drastic rate because i know for a lot of people it could be worse don't let anyone tell you that you are not worthy of redemption counsel or better yet don't let anyone say that you're delusional because more than likely you're not now i do know that mental illness and all that can play a part but if you know that your mental illness does not include delusions or hallucinations definitely look into getting some spiritual counsel so with that being said thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys so much for being there with that being said make sure you guys like share subscribe do all that and i'm gonna see y'all next time Bye.